Hi, it's Colin McKinnon here with Monsters MMA in association with Fightbook MMA. We're going to go live with Jake Brutal Boswick. Jake's a, a great character. He's out living in the States, in Miami. And uh, yeah, he's he's competed in everything. So we'll get him on and uh, have a good chat. Yeah, how's it going? What's happening, son? How's it going? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? I'm not bad yourself. Can't grumble, son. Can't grumble. Weather's <laughs> a bit upside down, but it's warm, so I'm not... Yeah, I seen your post yesterday. With, I think it was yesterday with, with the rain and things like that. We've had that for the past uh, past week here. Right, okay. Yeah, we've had, some, we've had some crazy storms over here, and now it's, like, real sunny. Yeah, no, I see some <laughs> weather, mate, like, over there. I know you've got a heat wave or something coming next uh, next week, though, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be fun in games, because I'm on uh, 2 to 10. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's always the way. <laughs> always the way, son. You sweet, though? Yeah, so, so how's things going with you? I was doing a little little bit of research and things like that, and you haven't competed in MMA since 2018, but I know you've competed in boxing. Yep. And uh, you had a bit of an injury from that and had some lovely surgery, which you posted yep. pictures of yep, yep, with yep. that. And uh, you've got a new venture that you want to go to as well. I do, mate, I do. I want, I want to try and knock up the, uh, the bare knuckle scene for sure. That's... Uh, Definitely next on my books. Um, you know, I think I jumped into MMA when I was like 16. So I kind of, <laughs> I remember back in the day then it was like uh, you could head stomp and all sorts, you know. So, yeah, the fact that you could do all that and I was a child compared to now. And I think fighting with no gloves would definitely be a more extreme. I know there's a, a, another show. There's one event. I'm not too sure where it is, where they actually use headbutts and stuff. Oh, That's nice. Yeah, that's proper full on. But um, I think that form of combat is just, yeah, it's just so, so powerful, mate. It really is. Yeah, I remember I messaged you when I was training not long ago and uh, my coach actually said he was telling the class about like doing the, over here with all the safeguards and things like that. Yeah. And uh, he turned around to me and said, oh, you might know him. You know Jake Boss. Yeah. He says, oh, yeah, I've got him. I follow him on social media. And he was like, yeah, he fought on like cage rage or something when he was 17 or 16. And he told the guy he was like 18 or 19. So they're yeah. like, fight. <laughs> Yeah, mate, I did. I, I, had, I had five. I had four or five fights under the age of eighteen. I had to blag my date of birth. I was born in eighty nine, so I used to change my date of birth. I put it to like eighty six or eighty seven, and then I done it again on the contract. You know, <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy. And I think back, and I was like, man, I was a kid, I was a child, and it, how much I've grown and learned, and you know, matured as a as a as a as a, as a, as a man. It's it's crazy. Yeah, what do you I, think something like that actually helped you? I mean. Like, I was just finishing school at 16 and you're out there knocking people out in pro fights, so... Yeah. It's... I don't know, man. It's really hard. Like, I think it's done me good, you know. I've had over 30-odd fights in in, uh, in MMA uh, and including I've had some kickboxing fights. I've had K1 fights with MMA gloves. Like, yeah, I've kind of kind of done a, quite a bit for my age, I think. Yeah, Great. someone's... Uh, shotgun, shotgun Young. Yeah. It's just put, I'm your biggest fan. I don't know if they talk to me or you, but... <laughs> sure, sure. I'm his biggest fan. Now he's my brother, mate. Yeah, much love. <laughs> on his son, much love, mate. So yeah, like obviously competing at 16 and things like that as a pro, and going into B BKB now is it because of how much is blowing up and stuff like that? Like there's so much like heat behind bare knuckle, and yep. there's a few promotions and stuff like that. We've seen big stars like Artem Lobov, Jason Knight, all ex UFC fighters yeah, that have yep. gone there, and like he's just blown up. Such an amazing sport. I really think that, you know, when it comes from boxing to bare knuckle, it's a complete separate art of its own. A lot of boxers, I tell them, yeah, I want to do bare knuckle, and they're like, wow, you're crazy. But they'll stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a set of 10-ounce gloves. But when you're getting hit in the face with a fist with nothing on it, that's a whole other ball game. It's a whole other form of fighting. <clears throat> so, yeah, I was speaking to Ricardo Franco, who's uh, a BKB champion over here. And... Yeah. Uh, he was saying that it makes him fight and spar a lot smarter. I mean, he got dropped in the in one of the fights that he, he ended up winning it, but he got dropped. And after that fight, he said it makes you fight so much smarter from like boxing where you can block and still take them shots and things like that. But in bare knuckle, you, you literally you can't take them shots. It it'd break your hand. And still get a fist anywhere. It's such a, so narrow and you get up the pipe and grabbing the head, punching behind the ear, things like that. It's just a, Again, it's it's 
definitely something I want to do, man. Yeah, so, we've seen it in MMA where people, like you said, get clipped behind the ear and it takes your equilibrium away. And that's with four ounce gloves on. And we've seen it happen in boxing. So I, I can't even you got to think of imagine how it is bare knuckle. <laughs> You got to think with the with the MMA side of things. <clears throat> if I clinch you or put you up against the fence, and I've got you in a in, in a little uh, I don't know a single arm clinch, and I'm uppercutting you and throwing hooks, and you can drop down and hit a single or try wrestle me, in bare knuckle you can't. You've either got to take that shot, or you're going to try and fight out of it, or you're going to take a knee. And I like the fact that I can just punch. I can put my head down and not worry about getting kicked in the face or worry about getting taken down. I can just work my hands and just try and put someone to sleep or. And then vice versa, I just want to go to war, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what quite a lot of uh, bare knuckle fighters say. They they say, like, it, it literally separates the men from the boys. Like, you can't run from it. Like, if you're getting yep. tired or you're hurt, you, you like you said, you can't shoot for a leg or you can't put teeth kick someone to push them away while you take that big, deep breath. There's nowhere to run. Exactly, man. I think for me, for my head and for, like, me growing as a person, that kind of experience, I think, will really help me you know i'm really yeah for sure and obviously you've, you've dabbled in boxing as well and uh, that's how you got your, your your bicep tear i think it was yeah yeah and you got a lovely scar on your arm and the, the yeah. pictures were just delightful bad boy look at this bad boy oh yeah so here's it's 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 pretty big it was only they it was only about two and a half inches and then i had to cut up a lot another inch up to my bicep because it was a complete rupture from the bicep head to where it goes into the forearm um i, I don't know if i don't know if you actually know what happened in the fight but i actually ruptured it in the first round of the fight about the first minute or two i completely ruptured it from the bicep not complete but obviously i ruptured it from the bicep and oh it was the end of the world and in the third round i went southpaw and i threw a straight left to his body and i felt that thing ping <laughs> Yo, that came off of my elbow and it was one of the worst kind of pains, uncomfortable things to try and fight with. But I done what I could with one hand and um, I think I gave the guy a good fight. That guy actually now is fighting live on ESPN and all singing, all dancing. So good luck to him. It's so right. that must give you extra confidence because it, it went to a decision, didn't it, the fight went, after you'd done it? Only a four-round fight. It was my boxing debut. I was originally supposed to be fighting at 185. It was uh, We had a few pull-outs on opponents, and I was like, man, get me anyone. I was just hungry. I wanted to fight. Get me anyone. And I got this guy at, like, 215. Uh, he's a, a light heavyweight or, I don't know, I don't know what, the cruiserweight or whatever. So I was like, yeah, don't care. Give in to me. Don't care. And you see the picture there. He's a big man, you know. He's got, obviously, some boxing experience. Oh, it's me cat. Some boxing experience, you know. So, uh yeah, it is what it is. So I've done what I could with one arm, and yeah, it is what it's done. Yeah, and from the the sight of your tattoos and things like that, and obviously with your arm and stuff, you don't seem to uh, to feel pain much. Like, oh, you've got that mentality where you can keep going. At the end of the day, mate, it's it's kind of kill or be killed. And um, I've I've pulled out of fights before. I've, I've you know I've tapped out to ground and pound back in the day. I tapped out to uh, John Phillips, our second fight. You know great war with him i think towards the end of the second he mounted me he top mounted me and he ran down some ground and pound and i, and I, tapped, out, I tapped out to submission you know technically uh, ground and pound and i will never do that again like, <laughs> burn and you grow um and i was a kid i was 19 19 or 20 i was a boy you know and uh yeah it's just crazy but yeah they, i don't take away any of the experiences i've got or the losses i have or Anything in life from when I was a baby to now, anything experiences helped me grow as a person and it's knowledge for me, you know? Yeah, so obviously going from, from that to, to bare knuckle and obviously doing Thai, uh, K1 fights and boxing fights and stuff like that, is it just your love for combat sports that is just making you carry on? Yeah, honestly, mate, there's nothing better than, you know, doing all that hard work and training, having the support of your team and, and your friends, family or whatever fans behind you, um, and trying to give 100%, battling it out with, like, a, another alpha and trying to come out on top, you know. Um, for fighters, they'll understand it. For the normal person, they would never understand that. But, yeah, man, the love I have for it, you know, I fight for free just because I enjoy fighting. Um, yeah, your brother commented saying, uh, why didn't you mention how many street fights you've won? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've definitely had a few street fights. <laughs> I think that's why I don't mind the bare knuckle scene. I worked the doors for many years, man. I've had many, many, many drums. 
bruv, dramas, dramas. But at the end of the day, everyone that knows me knows uh, things I've done or been around or been involved in. So, um, yeah, I have a lot of experience there, you know, even working on the doors, you know. Man, you got you got a bunch of lads there. They want to have a fight. They take their shirt off and, you know, all right, take my earpiece out. <laughs> <laughs> Very different in the UK to how it is, uh, obviously, over here in Florida or Miami or whatever. So over in the States, man, you get arrested for anything, you know. It's so easy to go go jail and blah, so blah. No more, not many street fights happening over there. Listen, mate, no, you don't see it. Man, you get arrested for nothing. It's like... <laughs> Any conflict, any problems, I'm like, no, I can't be bothered. Can't be up. Everyone's <laughs> got a gun, so it's like, yeah, I'm not worried. You know what I mean? Just yeah. yeah, I remember one of your stories and you were saying that someone was driving behind you and he shouted to you and you were like, oh, yeah, I get out of your car then. And, the, and they stopped and you were like, let's go. And he sort of just drove <laughs> off. If someone gets out of their vehicle, it's a little bit of a different story. You want to get out and I step out and we go, okay, you're going to do that. Obviously, people get into their dramas, people get into their confrontations. It happens. I'm not going to say I'm a good boy and, oh, no, I would never fight in the street. <laughs> and will, and the same as anybody else will. At the end of the day, um, this is life and it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I try to avoid many situations. I haven't had a street situation, mate, over here. Uh, I really haven't. Uh, I've been close to, but... And nothing's really happened, but in the UK, it's, it's another thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, so so with your social media and things like that, yeah, you're a character on, on Instagram. You do things to, like, you're always happy and things like that. And people say, oh, you can't always be happy. People say it to me, like, I, I, I feel like I wake up with a smile, but, like, the 20 minutes I have in the house where I'm having a coffee and I feel like shit, it's preparing <laughs> me to go out and annoy the world with a smile. There you go, mate. That's, there you go. I, I do my best to smile at a lot of things. You know, everyone's got problems. Everyone's got issues. Um, people are worse off than others. You know, it kind of is what it is. You, you, you can't go around or go through life dwelling and down on stuff because, you know, you're not really going to get far and you're going to have a sad life. So I do my best to smile and be happy at anything and everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, one thing I find quite amusing with, yeah, obviously with yeah, your MMA career, fighting at 16 and now going in a bare knuckle and having the nickname Brutal and stuff like that, and you go home to two cats. It's, uh... <laughs> I, I, thanks, Fire Salem. Yeah, my little babies, man. I've got two two little boys. Uh, one's, like, eight months now, and the other boy, he's, uh, he's like, three and a half, kind of up to, like, four. Um, but, yeah, I've had cats in my life my whole time. I love I love animals. I just see the ducks now. I feed the ducks. Yeah, I was going to mention the ducks as well. They've, they started following you home and stuff. Yeah, I used to I used to post all that sort of stuff. I kind of calmed down a little bit off the ground, to be honest. But, you know, I feed the ducks most days. You know, I'm out there giving them their oats because I don't feed them bread because you shouldn't feed ducks bread. You give them oats, better nutrition. So, um, yeah, it's just little things like that, mate. I'm, I'm very soft and sensitive like that. My, my parents are. I can cry at a film, no problem. But then I can smash someone's head in, you know, 10 minutes later. And it's just, that's just me. You know, that's just me. Yeah, it's, and that's what I mean. It's, everyone has their own characters and things like that. And you are one of a kind. And it's kind of what you have to be now. And uh, everyone seems to enjoy it. Yeah, I am who I am, mate. At the end of the day, I own who I am. I'm very, yeah, I, I love who I am, who I've turned out to be. Uh, my morals, my knowledge, um, just simple please and thank you, mate. Just, you know, I, I do stand out from a lot of other people out here for sure. Um, just being from the UK, we're just very different kind of breed anyway. The way we are brought up to the way people here are brought up is a whole other culture, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things that you need to do is teach people in America how you make a cup of tea. Listen. Like, I seen a video on TikTok the other day and this woman just absolutely butchered a cup of tea. <laughs> simple. <laughs> cold milk in before the water and that like no nah. yeah and sticking it in the microwave like what's all that about no can't do that can't do that to be honest I, I i broke my kettle not too long ago and i had to use a microwave for a little bit but then <laughs> but it's yeah, not yeah the... i see it like you go to walmart and stuff like that and like you're telling people about like salad cream and things like that yeah. and like what's this like we've never heard of this before ever yeah, I literally went to Walmart earlier. There's only there's only one store here that you can get salad cream, and it's called Publix. And they got like a an international section. They got hobnobs. They've got chocolate uh, McVitie's or whatever they're called, um, vinegar, Marmite, some random stuff. You know, a couple of chocolate bars. But salad cream, that's just that's just life, mate. Yeah, because Americans don't really seem to put vinegar on chips and stuff like that, and it's just like really. Yeah, they don't understand. How it. boring. <laughs> salad cream, real quick. <laughs> I got a nice big one that my dad, my dad brought over for me because you can't get in the size. This is what salad cream. 
higher, Sam. <laughs> See, I'm not a fan of it. I don't really eat salad, so. I, mate, listen, I, have, I used to make salad cream sandwiches. I have salad cream just with cheese. Salad cream. Listen, you got uh, a little, uh, no, the little, little sausage rolls? <laughs> Actually, I do that with tomato sauce. Well, there you go. I did a salad cream. I've got a major sweet tooth, so that does it for me. It's good that you've not lost your accent as well. A lot of people that go over to the States from here, they, they kind of lose their accent or they try and fit in and... <laughs> Nah, I try to stand out more, so I'm like more British. <laughs> if <laughs> words, you know, I have to say chips rather than crisps because they just people just don't get it. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, where's the chips at? I'm like, I want to say crisp, or I'll say it first. Or when I'm talking to people about football, I'll say football, then I'll put in, then I'll say soccer, just so you get it. <laughs> yeah. like, my terms first. I still say boot, not trunk. I still say, like, the bonnet. I don't say my hood, you know, of my car. Little things yeah, like Yeah, I see you. Uh, you got yourself a Volkswagen Golf as well, keeping the, the British there as well. Yeah, come on. From a German motor, but they're common over here and not very common over there. Obviously, I put the uh, British-style plate on the front, so I've got a little bit of British in there. Got to rep it in there, you know. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm going to let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. I'm glad Brilliant. you finally got it done. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much for having me on. And, um, yeah, just stay tuned, man. I, I look forward to the future, man. I've definitely got some some action to show the world. And uh, hopefully the bare knuckle scene will be next. But who knows? Might go back to MMA. Something else might open. Obviously, I'm I'm here, there. I'm working with some new guys now. So let's just kind of see. But um, but the world will know soon, son. Great stuff. I appreciate Always it. a pleasure. Thank you Thank very you. much. I just want to give a few quick shout-outs. Excess mouth guards. Keeping my teeth in. Keeping me pretty. Uh, fight fuel for all your uh, protein stuff, supplements, fight apparel, and tasteless teas. Oy, Thank oy. you very much. Thank you. Have a lovely day, bro. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you.